happy every Wednesday, everybody. If you're here, him upstairs, he's in one of those moves, so I think he's going to try and get in every take of every clip that I'm going to record. So today's brew day. I haven't brewed in what feels like forever since the Strat Memorial brew day, um, which that beer is actually conditioning now, so I can't wait to try that one. So basically, uh, Steve Bogdan, John Anderson, there's a few people who are experimenting with Kvik, Quick, Kvik. I had one of the Norwegian style, anyway. I really like the sound of the yeast um, and the profiles it gives us, so I thought I'd give it a crack. So I'm going to be doing a elderflower. I'm going to be doing an elderflower quick. quick. So, a uh, quick rundown of what's going in it. Um, first off, we're shooting for a 105.6. Final gravity, not sure, it reckons 101.3, but it doesn't have yeast blend, the type of yeast that I'm using on Brewer's Friend. So it's gonna, you know, it'll be roughly around 5.6, hopefully. I've used 32, SRO 7.9, so we're going in with five kilos of Marisol Pell, 200 grams crystal 60, half a kilo of Carapils. Pretty standard um, grain bill there. Then at 60 minutes, we're going in with 30 grams of Challenger. Then 10 minutes, it's 30 grams of Fuggles with Protoflop. Five minutes, dried elderflower. Now, I may made an elderflower pearl before, and I only put just under 20 grams of elderflowers in. And the elderflower was very, well, it was there, but it was pretty subtle. So I was going to double it, so it was about 40 grams. And then when I saw what was left in the 50 gram packet, I thought, fuck it, you know what? Dump it all in. So hopefully it'll be nice and elderflowery. Well, I'm pretty damn sure it will be. But from what I understand, the creek yeast is quite strong, so that should get through it. And I'm playing like 20 grams of Challenger. Normal yeast nutrient at five minutes as well. And the yeast that I will be mostly using today is Sigmund's Boss creek yeast. I'm going to ferment that. I reckon it can go up to about 37. I'm probably going to stick around 34, 35 mark. Apparently at that temperature you'll get loads of uh, loads of esters and loads of loads of flavour and character and so it all sounds bloody lovely. Uh, I dove in, it's mashing here now at 66.6. Always seems to be around the number that I get. I don't know if it's something to do with the devil, I don't know, but who knows? And that's what we're doing. Um might make this grain to glass, might not as per usual. People seem to um, be enjoying grain to glasses, so I'll probably make it a grain to glass. There you go, that's that. Um, and that's it. Uh, normal water here, sparge water here. Is that all you've got to say? 90 minute mash. I will see you in about 75 minutes. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Not to die if you can hear me, it looks bloody blue on that screen. But 60 minutes are, well, as you can see, hot break. So, as I said, 60 minute addition, 30 grams of Challenger. Boom, start that timer. Okay, so, as I said before, it's going to be a quick yeast. And um, I'm going to start the load of flour in and see how we get on. Um, John Anderson was quite enough, actually. I've just got some. Uh, stuff he top cop from his one. So apparently this one is supposed to give, sorry, the Sigmund Voss, supposed to give some nice uh, orangey burnt orange flavours. Um, and the one that John sent me is supposed to give lemon flavours. So, I have to figure out what to do with that. I can feel, I feel two Greek brews in quick succession. Right, um, I guess I'll be back to you. I guess, I think it's 10 minutes to go for the next one. All right, thank you very much. Aloha. So 10 minutes left. <clears throat> obligatory, obligatory right block. Uh, followed by 30 grams of fuggles. 30 grams of fuggles. Don't quite that in. Boom. No Willy Wonka shit today. All pretty straightforward so far. So, um, 
Yeah, that's it. We're back in five minutes to go. And as if by magic and no time at all. Well, for me anyway, not for you guys. You see a, see a jump cut. It's coming up to well, it's five minutes to go. Sipping on uh, Red Dog's Coconut Dunkle that he sent me probably about a year ago. Fucking lovely. I've got to say that though. Mm. Okay, so we're going to do the Elderflower edition. As I said before, I think my first Elderflower I used 18 or 20 grams, and it wasn't pronounced enough for me for what I think this beer should be. Um, so I was going to double it, and that would be just to literally 40 or 39 to 40 grams. Left me 10 grams up more. So I thought, you know what? So to keep the Elderflower out of all the spigots or poppets, spigots, what the fuck? Keep all the little bits of out of the poppets and out in the keg. I'll put the extra 10 grams in, round it up to the 50, but put it in there. The hot spider. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Fifty grams of elder flour. In, down. Let's get it in. Get the damn good soaking. A bit harder to get in than I thought it would be. Oh, there's that elder flower. Oh, 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 missed you, baby. Love elder flower. All right, it's four minutes to go, but all that's left to do is a flame out addition. Now, as I said, I went, I basically done this recipe, tweaked it. Um, and last time I did the flame out addition, I literally just put it in flame out, put it in, waited ten minutes, chilled it. This time I'm going to do a hop stand. So I'm going to chill it down to eighty, and I'll be back. Thanks very much. I can get rid of this screen. Okay, so I can move that. So we're now sitting at, if you can read there, 81 degrees. Okay, so that's good. That's good enough for me. For 20 grams of, 20 grams of Challenger. Going in, give it a quick push around. And that. Boom, boom, boom. And uh, that'll be it, we'll be back for the numbers. Thanks everyone. Hello everyone. So the end of the brew day, brew day. Done. All oh, pretty uneventful to be honest. All oh, pretty simple. So, oh, what I'm gonna do first is, say cheers. This is my blueberry uh, wheat beer. Not as much blueberry as I'd like. But it's still really cannable. So let's pitch the yeast if I can get it out of here. What the hell? There we go. <laughs> what the fuck is solid? There we go. That's good. That's getting there. Jesus. That's some hardcore yeast. Okay, so let's give it a good, good fucking swirl. Jeez. Worried about that? Well, not worried. Is in there. That's quite hardcore. Anyway, probably shouldn't be. Oh, let's just get it in. Put your hands in the old star sack, which I probably should have done before, but didn't. Just dump the filler in there. Wow. In. Sweet, all in. Happy days. Okay, um, gonna ferment this at 34. So actually, let me shove it in the fridge and I'll be back for the numbers. Oh. So, that's in the fridge. Now, set at 34 degrees. <sighs> oh, for fuck's sake, I've got a bit of paper. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, so we're going for around 105.6. We've got 105. Uh, uh, well, we're aiming for ish. Uh, looks like 
Let's um, did have a little bit of a stop start. Baby needed eating, feeding, blah blah blah. So, and I did mash in at just under sixty-seven. So that was sixty-five. So that sounds about right. So happy with that. So one hundred five three. God knows what it's going to go down to because, as I said before, that yeast isn't listed on Brewer's Friend. So God knows, it's going to be five percent ish, which is cool because I wanted a beer which is nice and drinkable. Uh, so it's going to sit in the fermenter for two weeks, doing what it does. Uh, bottle up two weeks. So in four weeks from now, we will do the taste test. That first report. Um, I'll catch you all later. <coughs> Let's hope this turned out all right. All right. So final part of the. Elderflower click Vic brain to glass. Now I haven't tried this. All I've done literally is pour off hard a quarter of a pint of crap from the bottom. I've just put uh, put it on now. So this is the first pour from the keg. Colour looks half decent. I think. So yeah, it came out 5.4. Let's have a look at it. And there it is. As always, it looks darker on there than it actually is. It's not dark at all. Decent head, but would be it's off a keg. Great. Great. Creamy. Nice. And the nose is out of flower. And I think I get that slight burnt orangey note from the um, Sigmund Voss. Vic yeast. So anyway, I don't know. Let's give it a whirl. You see. Mm. Right. So I've been in the keg two weeks. Don't know why, but that body seems that's really quite full body. I, don't, I can't. I don't think I put anything in it to get it like that. But I can't remember what temper I mashed that. I probably told you at the beginning of this video. But that's the amount of body is very impressive. Mm. Elderflower is lovely. That that yeast, that farmhouse yeast. Strange, I've never used it before, and I don't even think I've tried it to be honest. It's definitely got that that burnty taste, burnt taste, say burnt, caramelised taste, and a bit orangey, a bit citrusy. Very interesting. That's rather more Five and a half, five point four. Wicked. Well, I think I fermented it at thirty five or thirty six as well. Anyway, whatever. Over the flower Kvik Kvik. I'm sorry, so impressed with that. I didn't think it would be anything like that. Well, if you've never tried a quick Kvik, still don't know how to pronounce it or whatnot, whatever. Um give it a boil. Gives you some really interesting bit. I mean, that is fun. That's really. Oh, that's lovely. I can't wait for it to be like another three weeks or so, so it's conditioned properly. That's going to be f cracking. Absolutely cracking. That's if the keg lasts that long. Anyway, thanks very much, everyone. Cheers. Um, hope you like the video. If not, don't tell me. <laughs> All right, cheers, everyone. See you soon. Happy Happy Wednesday.